Rightio. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this ordinary meeting of the Douglas Shire Council being held on Tuesday, 28th of July, 2020, at the Mosman Council Chambers. I hereby give notice that in accordance with Section 277E of the Local Government Regulations 2012, that this ordinary meeting of Council will be closed to the public because of health and safety reasons associated with the public health emergency involving COVID-19. The ordinary meeting of Council will be available to view on live stream on Council's website and will be available for others to watch at a later time. I'd like to acknowledge the Kukuyalanji people who are the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today. I'd also like to pay respect to their elders, both past, present and emerging, and extend that respect to other Indigenous Australians who may be listening or watching our meeting this morning. We'll start off with our attendances and I uh, do have an apology here from Councillor Nolling. Um, Councillor Nolly has advised us that she is an apology for today's meeting and I'd like to move that Councillor Nolly's apology is received and a leave of absence be granted for her today's, for today's meeting. If I can get a seconder please for that. Councillor Skomazin. All those in favour? That's unanimous and carried. I note that everyone else is here and we've got all our staff and CEO present of course. Any conflicts of interest that anyone needs to declare? All right, confirmations of the meetings. Uh, there's no mayoral minutes today, no. So if we go on to our confirmation of the minutes uh, from the special meeting on Tuesday 30th of June, if I could have a mover, please. Councillor Scommerson and a seconder. Councillor McEwen, all those in favour? And that's carried unanimously. Confirmation of the minutes of the ordinary council meeting held on Tuesday 30th of June. If I could have a mover, please. Councillor Scommerson and Councillor Zamatara seconded that. All those in favour? And that's carried unanimously as well. We can then go on to the agenda items. Start off with 5.1 today, which is the Daintree Water Bottling Facility Request for Negotiated uh, Decision Notice. The recommendations that Council issues a negotiated decision notice for the material change of use development approval for medium impact industry water bottling facility over the land described as lot SP, that's lot 10 SP 304851 uh, subject to the following conditions. If I could have a mover please. Councillor Scommerson seconded. Councillor McEwen. Councillor Scommerson would you like to speak to it since you moved it? Oh no, everything's fine with that. Anyone against? I'd Come. like to make, ask some questions. Mayor yes, Kirby. of course, absolutely. Um, just correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Becker, Mr. Lamont. <coughs> the 10,000 litres from the water supply that still stands and anything additional come from the bore, is that correct? And through the mayor, yes, that's correct. It's, it's limited to a maximum of 10,000 litres per day. Per day. And uh, we have any indication of what's coming out of the bore per day? Out of the what, sorry? The ball. I don't think they've got any, uh, I don't think they've sunk any balls on site. Okay. Yet. So um, we're not, so we don't know if the ball on site is potable water, so until it's tested, is that correct? Yeah, I, I, I don't believe there's anything unless Dan knows something further, but I don't think they've sunk any yet. Yeah, through the mayor, uh, there's, there's no detail on how much water they propose mm. to take from the ball or, or the body of that water at this point. Um, what we generally do with these sorts of assessments is we just look at overall impacts and we're regulating the impacts to humidity by the vehicle trips per day, the hours of operation per day, and the um, size of the actual modelling facility. So as far as how much they actually produce, it doesn't really matter if they can fit those um, packaged carts within those requirements. And, uh, okay, well, I'm suggesting that there are bores that aren't, are not potable or that need to be treated. So I think, I don't know, I need to know what methods are going to be used to be treated and what methods are going to be used to contain the runoff from the street. I think we need to answer these questions before we can sort of make a judgment on this. Especially if it's going to be damaged to the surrounding environment, we need to know answers to these questions. Is it through the man generally, um they will certainly have to you know, obtain you know, food licensing and food production um, requirements in accordance with environmental health regulations. 
But uh, as far as the info we received on the plant and materials, <coughs> it didn't seem like there would be a great deal of byproduct or water that was going to um, not be packaged and go anywhere. So. That's depending on what level of treatment the more water could, could possibly need. It may not need any, but I think we need to determine that before that decision is made. Mm. I, I mean, I'm only surmising the fact that if you're wanting to bottle it, you wouldn't want that much treatment done to it. You'd want it as fresh as possible. So, that, Well, to have it bottled water, you yeah. need, it needs to be potable, so it, it needs the ultimate of treatment to make it bottled water. So that's my issue, that's all. Another issue I have is also with the packaging, the decision on the cardboard is now in question, so I, I, I know I think these questions need to be answered before we make a decision, before I can make a decision on it, what the packaging is going to be used, and what methods of treatment, if the water is potable, if the ball water is potable. I think it's an important, important issue in this. I'll turn to the other councillors on this, if you have any thoughts. Well, I probably agree with Roy, if there's questions about that, I think it's probably going to be asked. Councillor Sconnison, any thoughts? Yeah, I think that's um, acceptable to want to know exactly what's coming out of that ball. <coughs> the only other question I had as well is that the water that they're taking out of the raw water, will it be metered? Do they have a metre on the, the amount of, that they're taking out daily? Yes. <coughs> For the minutes, it'll be fitted with a restricting valve so they can't actually take any more than 10,000 litres over. Uh, Council is going talking about the actual bore itself. At, at this point in time, I don't believe any bore has been sunk to look at how much water can come out of the, the actual bore. And I'm sure there's going to be, you know, health and regulation requirements about the, the standard of that water, which fall outside of the planning scheme assessment um, in relation to the cardboard packaging and, and whether it's plastic or cardboard or the biodegradable um, aspect of that. Again, that's something that's that's more of a marketing for their own business purposes mm -hmm. as opposed to something that's going to be controlled by the planning scheme when you seek to do a water bottling facility. There's no provisions in the scheme that say, you know, it has to be <coughs> biodegradable or cardboard or all those particular components. So um, but it could be a bit of a stretch. I was working on eliminating single use packaging, so I think it's something that we need to be aware of. Mm -hmm. I assume from what you're saying, it's not a planning <coughs> issue though, so therefore it can't be considered as far as planning, it's more a personal mm -hmm. thing on that part. Yeah, that's certainly my view. Um, yeah. The only one that I'm concerned about is what you're saying about the runoff, etc. if any treatment needs to be done to the bore water, uh, which I think you know, I'm looking to the staff to see here on advice as far as that goes. Well, that wasn't really, it, it's, it's not anticipated that any water coming out of the bore is going to be a you know, contaminant to the um, environment. Uh, I think it's more so if it can be used for drinking water and it's potable and high quality, then they'll bottle it. Otherwise, it, I think the application spoke about just using it as some kind of washing down um, additional water supply for you know cleaning and washing down hard stand areas and things like that. Um, I don't see it as being a environmental component. No, that's, yeah, that's fine. Um, oh, for me personally, I, I'm happy to make a decision on it, but I will put it to the other councillors if they prefer to defer the matter for to find this information out. So I will ask um, all those in favour of deferring the matter. That's uh, Councillor McEwen, Councillor Scommerson, Councillor Zamataro, all those against deferring it be myself, but the majority is to defer it. So that matter has been deferred subject to further information coming forward. Right, so 5.2, 
um, the Queensland planning framework changes, planning initiatives to support economic recovery. The recommendation is one, the council makes a submission to the Minister of Infrastructure and Planning regarding the proposed changes as outlined on the agenda report. Uh, two, that the, a copy of council submission be forwarded to the local government association in <coughs> Queensland for inclusion in a joint council submission to be prepared by the LGAQ. If I can get a mover, please. Councillor Scommerson, a seconder. Councillor Zamataro. Councillor Scommerson, would you like to speak to this? Oh, no, I'm fine, thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone against the motion? Not against the like last myself has done just some a yeah, question please. on page 19 in the planning comment. Um, the written advice to neighbouring options considered superfluous. And it goes on to say that um, the some of the addresses are uh, rentals and transient occupants. Is that? But is it not um, rule of thumb to um, the actual owner of the property to receive this? Through the mayor, the uh, owner is always receiving a written copy yeah. of any of the notification, and it's a notice on site, and normally it's a notice in the newspaper. So that isn't changing. The newspaper is changing a bit where the newspapers in a local government area, they can have uh, an advertisement in on a e-site, to use e-site, we still have the King's Post, so there'll still be a requirement for public notice in the King's Post. Uh, but in terms of notifying the occupants of the site, those occupants can change over time and they will be able to see the public notice on the display at the site anyway if they're neighbouring. So that's always visible. Okay, well, sorry, Jenny, I was probably asked the yeah. question correctly. It's saying that um, the occupants are, are consulted on these planning issues or only the owner? Because this is suggesting the occupants are There consulted. is the requirement under the statute, under the regulations, that the owner must be publicly notified in writing, but there's nothing for the owner, for the occupants of that neighbouring premise. Does it mean to say that those neighbouring occupants can't do a properly made submission? It's just who is required to be informed of that uh, proposed change. It would mean in some instances though, that if you said the occupants have to be given written notice, then who are they giving a written notice to? Would that uh, neighbouring property they may have a, a rental for a week, they may have a rental for half a year, but the neighbouring owner or applicant is not to know whether they're there for a week or half a year or who it's there. So in our show, it's quite difficult. It's also that some rural properties don't have letterboxes, I'm sorry, don't have a, a letterbox at the address, so therefore someone would have to know their post office box and that's not known to everyone. People would have to come to council and ask for, you know, who is there and we may not have the advice of who is the occupant or how do you get that notice to the occupant. The state was indicating the applicant could then serve it physically on that neighbouring occupant, which meant that the person would have to go onto that person's property to serve them that notice in some rural areas. We do have a requirement, and we still will have a requirement, that a public notice is put at the front of the property to each road frontage. So anyone who is in that local area, anyone can write this properly made submission. They just have to put their name, address, and the grounds of their submission and lodge it within a certain time, and that's listed on those notes. Okay, so that, that's actually saying the occupants uh, not necessarily need to be notified. Yes, we're just saying under the regulation that would be difficult and in some cases it may not be possible to have a written notice to us it's quite superfluous when you've got a notice on the site. Yeah. Thank you. I think it is also worth noting um, that this is 
um, a state government initiative that they are proposing the changes and this is the opportunity for us to respond to those changes. This is not us making changes to any planning scheme. Um, all those in favour of the proposal? And that's carried unanimously. Five point three: the trunk trunk infrastructure works in Craig Lee. The council resolves to allocate in the 21-22 capital works budget one million dollars for payment towards the construction and delivery of planned trunk infrastructure works being undertaken as part of the construction of the first two stages of the approved residential estate at Craig Lee over land described as lot two on SR four three one and delegate authority under section 257 of the Local Government Act 2009 to the Chief Executive Officer to finalise any and all matters associated with the payment of outstanding monies associated with the delivery of trunk infrastructure and to enter into an infrastructure agreement with the owner of lot two on SR 431. Which I'm happy to move this one if I can have a seconder please. Councillor Skommerson. Um, just I'd like to say it's great to see this project going forward. It's been sitting there for quite some time. Um, and this is going to give them the, the kickstart of getting this work done and these lots getting up for sale. Um, this is money the council would have to pay anyway. Um, and giving this assurance to them just brings this project forward and allows them to start construction of the actual lots so they can get them up for sale. Um, anyone wishes to speak against the motion? Cool. Sorry, Mayor Care. For the benefit of, of probably the gallery, this is money you said council would have to pay anywhere which would normally be paid for completion of the work that we're doing it to get kickstarted. Uh, through the Mayor, um, it will still be payable at the completion of the work. Um, so the, they, they will still have to fund the actual initial construction of it, but then we'll immediately have that money sitting there to... Right. So this, this is just an assurance that we will pay it. Yeah. So, any other comments from councillors? No? We'll put the matter to the vote. All those in favour? And that's carried unanimously. 5.4 single use plastic free policy. The recommendation is that Council adopts a single use plastic free policy. If I could have a mover, please. Councillor Scommerson and seconded by Councillor Zambataro. Councillor Scommerson, would you like to speak to us? Thanks. Yeah, I just think it's a great policy that's been put into place by the Council and it just helps our environment and it may take a little time for people to get used to it, but in the long run, I think it would be great. Anyone like to speak against the policy? Any other comments, councillors? <clears throat> Again, I agree with you, Councillor Scollins, and it's great to see this come through. We've had the Plastic Free Douglas um, going initiative going for quite some time now, and that's worked very well. I think this is the obvious forward step from that. Um, we have spoken, and I think if there is mention in here about um, for concerns for health, et cetera, with COVID-19, there are some practicality issues <coughs> currently with like, things like single source servings. Um, with COVID-19, you can't use a bottle of tomato sauce, so you have to use the single servings currently. Um, but there's certainly things that we can work through as we go forward. But the initiative is great to move us away from the plastics. Would you like to make any comments at all? Um, through you, uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I would like to just announce that we have been considering about a six month phasing out period. So during this period, we would like to also help those vendors, for example, at Port Douglas Markets, to uh, really help them through that um, situation, um, go through the products, and work through those better options uh, compared to single use plastics. Wonderful. Thank you very much. No other comments? We'll put it to the vote. All those in favour? And that's carried unanimously. 5 Our next one is 5.5, .5, the water and wastewater customer service standards. The recommendation is the council receives and notes the updated water and wastewater customer service standards review 2020 within the Douglas Shire. If I could have a mover, please, on that one. Councillor Scommerson, and I'm happy to second that one. Councillor Scommerson, would you like to say anything to it? Oh, no, I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, it's a review that has to happen, so it's all good. Anyone like to speak against the motion? Any other comments regarding it? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just make a couple of comments. It's great. As you said, it is five years. Every five years we have to do this. Uh, we did go out to public consultation on it. Um, there was ability for people to comment. Um, and, you know, 
customer service standards is absolutely something that we need to pride ourselves on. So having the reviews regularly is something that we have to do. Would you like to just say anything to them at all? No, all good, so it's as written. Um, we'll put that to the vote then. All those in favour? And that's carried unanimously. Thank you very much for that. Much appreciated. 5.6, uh, we've got the water and wastewater quarterly report for the period ending 30 June 2020. The recommendation is, uh, is recommended that the quarterly report of the water and wastewater department for the period ending 30 June 2020 be received and noted. If I could have a mover, please. Councillor Zamataro seconded by Councillor McEwen. Uh, Councillor Zamataro, would you like to say anything? No, I'll be straightforward, Mayor Anyone like to speak against it? Any other comments from councillors? Um, thank you very much for a very detailed report. There's new, more new things in there, which is good to see. Um, I highly recommend people actually going to the website and having a look at this report and seeing the detail in it and what's actually involved in providing water to this shire. Mr Tox, did you want to say anything to the report? Uh, no, it's all in there. Thank you. Wonderful. It's a very, very extensive report. Can I just say one thing? Yes. Is it possible that with our reports, which are quite detailed and they're well done, is it possible maybe next time that we do a water report that we can do the graphs like instead of two years, maybe extend it to a like a five year, just so people can have a look at how our water's going compared to a couple of years, just a little bit, um, I don't know if it's possible if we can do that, but just so that it's we certainly can... certainly something we can take on notice yeah. and discuss with the staff after yeah. the meeting. Yeah. certainly see it for some way even the comparison of the, the year prior like on our own water bills we're sitting mm. year prior yeah yeah it's, there are de various details in the reports where we can always always look forward to making things better yeah, yeah. So. and not that we actually have to comment on you know those years but just so people a visual so because most people think it's visual so. thanks if there's no other comments we'll put that to the vote all those in favor and that's carried unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Tonks. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 5.7 Mossman Golf Course proposal of purchase. Uh, the recommendation is that Council resolves to delegate the power to pursue under Section 257 and 262 of the Local Government Act 2009 to the Chief Executive Officer to purchase Lot 21 on SP 21264 and associated buildings on the land and the adjacent land on Lot 20, SP. 212664 by negotiation for a maximum amount. Number two is after the purchase, approve a trustee permit for the lot 263 SR540 and freehold lease <coughs> on lots 20 and 21 SP212664 with Mossman Memorial Bowls Club for 12 months with an option agreeable to both parties to extend into a trustee permit of management rights options on council freehold land and up to a further two years to manage operations of the Mossman Golf Course. Number three is to delegate authority under S257 of the Local Government Act 2009 to the Chief Executive Officer to determine and finalise any and all matters associated with this report. If I could have a mover, please. Councillor McEwen, seconded by Councillor Scommerson. Uh, Councillor McEwen, would you like to say anything to this? Yeah, just a couple of things. Um, I really think this um, negotiation has been done fantastically well through the council staff here. I believe it's a win-win for all parties involved. The combined, combined club, obviously at this point in time with what's been happening in Port Douglas, can't continue to uh, manage the, the golf club. So we're helping them out in, in a fair way. It's not over the top, it's a, it's a fair amount that we're doing this for. Uh, the golf club continues on as a, a very important community um, facility. There's a hundred odd people out there that are so happy with that. And also, most importantly, is that the Douglas Shire Council and the ratepayers, we're outlaying money, which is going to be returned to us over a relatively short period of time when you talk about it commercially. Um, and once that's done, we have another income stream that will continue on for the, the life that we have with the um, Bolster. And I'm sure the Bolster will be able to run this facility very well with their experience. Absolutely. Anyone like to speak against the motion? <coughs> Any other comments regarding it? No, I think it's a great it's a great um, step forward for the council to do this because um, the last the golf club's been there, course and club's been there for such a long time, and um, it would be a shame that you know 
the opportunity arises where a developer could come through. So I think that's something that we've secured and it's an asset for our community. Absolutely, couldn't agree more. And, and again, I just want to make it very clear that we're purchasing bricks and mortar here. We're not actually purchasing a business. So the business will be operated by the Bowls Club and the council is just purchasing the bricks and mortar for a return with the rent, which we will get. So with that, um, we'll put it to the vote. All those in favour? And that's carried unanimously. <coughs> 5.8, uh, waive Daintree Ferry bus fees for August and September 2020. The recommendation is that council resolve to endorse the proposed waiver of Daintree Ferry charges for the buses for the period of the 1st of August 2020 to 30 September 2020 and Council de delegates authority under Section 257 of the Local Government Act 2009 to the Chief Executive Officer to administer the above relief provisions. If I could have a mover, please, on that one. Councillor Zamataro, seconded by Councillor McEwen. Uh, Councillor Zamataro, would you like to say anything to the motion? Oh, I think it's a good initiative by Councillor to, with the pandemic we're going through, I think it's essential that we keep visitors coming Absolutely. Anyone wish to speak against the motion? And any other comments then from councillors? I just have one comment that I'd like to make that uh, I agree with the um, proposed waiver for the August to September. After September, I think we need to seriously look at what can be done after that. Absolutely. You know, we do, do agree in the sense that there's only so long that we can waive the fees forever. Um, we have to look at it. Um, we are battled with the systems that we have here, unfortunately, as far as what ways we can do things. And this is the, the most administratively, financially sensible way to do it for this time. Um, but as you know, we will speak about that in the coming months, how we can look to the future and progressively start charging for these things if we need to. But you know, it's important for the meantime that we get these buses going across there and get as many people as we can into the Daintree to spend whatever they can over there to keep those businesses going. Uh, with that, we'll put it to the vote. All those in favour? And that's carried unanimously. 5.9, the interim financial report, June 2020. The recommendation is the council notes the interim financial report and the estimated financial position for the 2019-20 financial year. If I could have a mover, please. Councillor Scommerson, seconded by Councillor McEwen. Councillor Scommerson, would you like to speak to us at all? Oh, just another good report from Tara and her team. So I think under the circumstances, it's as good as what we're going to get at the moment. So. Well done. Anyone wish to speak against the motion? And any further comments from councillors? Nothing. No, thank you, Miss Colleen. It's another um, very detailed report that covers off everything that's been happening for the past month. Um, you know, the unfortunate true figures are starting to show through it, um, which of course will end with the, the approximate one point four million dollar deficit for this financial year. It's starting to head towards there, but. Unfortunately, with COVID and everything else that's going on, it's the way it is, unfortunately. So would you like to say anything at all to the report? Uh, through the Mayor, just to say that it's a very um, interim report. So it's before all our end of year adjustments. There's a lot of work still to do and a lot of invoices still to come in, um, provisions to be calculated, etc. So it's we have to present at this time to every meeting. But... Um, yeah, it's, it's uh, nowhere near the final result, and that's why we, we've sort of shown the estimated result at the same time. Thank you. If there's no further comments, we'll put it to the vote. All those in favour? And that's carried unanimously. 5.10, the CEO report for the period April to June 2020. <coughs> the council receives and notes the organisational report card and the report from the Chief Executive Officer for the period April to June 2020, which I'm happy to move that one if I can have a seconder, please. And it's Councillor Stomerson. Um, just want to thank Mr Stormer for another extremely detailed report. It's amazing when you go through this and you see everything that has happened over the past couple of months. You know, it, it's amazing to see how much we do achieve in a short period of time and you look at it all in writing like this so it's, it needs to be commended to yourself and the staff for the amazing work that you do here with a, a small team and a small shire we still battle way above our belts um, 
Anyone wish to speak against the motion? Any other councillors like to make a comment towards the report? Yeah, I'd like to make one. I'd just like to let um, the CEO and his staff um, that I've had a quite, quite a few phone calls so that people are so impressed on this report, how detailed it was, and, uh, and they really enjoy being well informed of what's happening within the council. Mr Stormer, would you like to say anything regarding it? <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. Yes, I, there was one glaring omission from my introductory comments, which is that I failed to thank the staff, and that's really important because this is all about the staff. They actually put this report together and they do all the work, and they've been able to do all of this despite all of the COVID restrictions. So I really, really want to thank the staff for um, uh, delivery of this. Absolutely. If there's no further comments, we'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? And that's carried unanimously. So that concludes the open session for today. We're about to go into closed session where we're going to be discussing three matters. The contractual matter S2751E, local